While on a mission in San Francisco for the nation of Krakoa with some of his fellow X-Men, Alex fought some humans who were involved in weapons trading with the Hellfire cult. After being attacked by some of them, he blacked out and lashed out. He started disfiguring and dismembering the criminals, but was stopped by his fellow X-Men before he could kill them. Due to this outburst, he was assigned by the Quiet Council to Mr. Sinister's team of Hellions, composed of mutants too violent or troubled due to their mutation, and led by Psylocke. Their first mission led them to taking down the Essex State Home for Foundlings in Omaha, Nebraska, which was a cover for his still active Marauder cloning farm. When Alex and the Hellions arrived, they were confronted by and battled the Goblin Queen and her perverse Marauders, whom she had been magically torturing. After a swift defeat, most of the Hellions were captured. Alex, acting differently like before, was instead taken to the Goblin Queen's quarters after they embraced each other, only to be sacrificed to a horde of demons, all while Alex was supposedly under her spell. After she realized that it was outside forces possessing Alex, and not her love, she was shot dead by John Graykoff. Still possessed, Alex blew up the state home out of anger, with the Hellions escaping to safety outside. After the mission, he pleaded with Cyclops to talk to the Quiet Council to resurrect Madeline Pryor. They denied his request due to her being a clone, which angered Alex. After Alex was killed on a mission with the Hellions to Arako and resurrected by the Five, he told Emma Frost he wanted to leave the team but was once again denied. He became suspicious of Mr. Sinister, refusing to believe his story that they all sacrificed themselves to ensure he got home safely and started questioning why Psylocke was so loyal to him. Alex couldn't get over Madeline's death and the Quiet Council's refusal to resurrect her. When he had to face Mastermind as part of a mission, he tortured him with visions of a relationship with Madeline that went from loving to domineering at the drop of a hat. When he attended the Hellfire Gala he spent the entire night asking members of the council for more details on their decision. The rest of the team soon started to realize he was going out of his way to dissociate from them. He eventually got an answer to his questions about Sinister and Quanon when the team fought the Locus Vile, a group of Araki mutants who came to retrieve the DNA a clone of Mr. Sinister stole from them during their mission to Arako. They revealed to the team many of the secrets Essex had been keeping from them, such as his secret clone lab in Murderworld he'd used Mastermind to trick the team into procuring for him. He and Graykoff wanted to destroy the lab but Psylocke begged them not to because he had a digital copy of her dead daughter's mind in there he'd been holding over her head to make her subservient. Alex and John were understanding but Empath interfered and made Alex revert to madness, as he'd been asked by Emma Frost to make sure Sinister didn't break any Krakoan laws. In his maddened state Alex destroyed the whole facility while laughing evilly. The next day Alex, horrified at what he'd done, went to talk to Emma Frost. She assured him that destroying the facility was for the best in spite of the guilt he was feeling and as a reward he was free to leave the Hellions. She also assured him she'd talk to the Council about having Madeline resurrected. After a final traumatic mission with the Hellions, this time not orchestrated by Mr. Sinister but voluntary on the team's part to help Orphan Maker save Nanny's AI baby from the right, Orphan Maker lost control and killed two Rangers and he and Nanny were put in the pit of exile in spite of the team's pleas. Alex parted amicably with his former teammates but was still shaken by everything he'd experienced. To make him feel better Scott revealed to him that the Council eventually did reconsider and brought him to Madeline wearing her old pilot's uniform. Although he was overjoyed to see her alive again she told him their relationship couldn't go any further because she needed time away from the Summers family. 